So, pro tip for people with mood disorders, um, you can find yourself getting sad or even a little bit worked up uh, or like oversensitized, um, over overstimulated, sorry, that's, that's not a word, or maybe it is, who knows, who knows, leave it up to the, to the English gods. Um, I encourage you to invest in these little tea lights, um, especially if you're on a college campus or if you have an apartment without renter's insurance, um, to not buy regular candles, um, or if you do, make sure the containers that they are, are in are sturdy. I'm going to show you an example. Um, if you do purchase regular candles, um, purchase them along with um, tea lights or something of the sort. Um, so you can have two real candles to watch over um, that are right in front of you that you blow out before you go to bed, before you leave the house, and then have the rest that are that just complete the ensemble um, that you can have behind you or on your way to the kitchen. Um, just one or two packs. They're fairly cheap. Um, and they're, um, if you remember to turn them off, they last quite a long time, and you can um, re re um, just put another battery in them. Um, but if you buy a real candle, um, these are little cats. Um, I found them at a secondhand store, and I keep finding these same containers, so I'm sure there's just a bunch of people who bought them and then realized they didn't need them. And then the universe just said, Rachel, this is for you. And so I took it upon myself to purchase them both for 75 cents. Um, and um, with the glass ones that are super paperweight thick, um, the wax will melt and you can pop them right out. But um, it smells really good. It's vanilla. Um, just getting more about candles. But it really, if you're over sensitized, we already established that wasn't what I meant to say. If you're overstimulated, um, I encourage you to get these because um, especially at night um, it's something to kind of bring you back to the place you are, the place you live in. Um, they're super calming and they're also super cheerful um, to have little like star lights in the darkness because of course by the time you get out of bed it's already um, in the afternoon and the sun's already going down it's winter and it's cold and these just really cheer you up and it's something you really don't have to think about but they do wonders so that's number one and another January 5th resolution is to number three out of eight is to get out more um, and that is mainly to conquer my um, fear of nothing. And my fear of nothing is I'm always afraid that people are going to be like really annoyed by me and then not let me know or um, uh, just kind of along the, those lines of social anxiety. But um, I would always make this excuse, like I even made this excuse today um, that they, I, I would be bothersome to that person, and sometimes it's worth it to yourself to take that risk. And if you are bothersome, it's one time deal, just say, Hey, do you want to go out and um, we'll go to the laundromat and I'll put my laundry uh, in a basket in your car and we'll drive to the laundromat and I'll put up my stuff and then we'll play, uh, I don't know. Pokemon Blue, uh, you know, bring your Game Boy Advance, so let's go. Um, I, don't, I don't think the blue was on the Advance. I had Emerald. Okay, I had Emerald, and that was on the Advance. Um, but we'll go, we'll just kind of chill out together. Like, are you doing anything today? You want to chill out for a while and hang out the laundromat? Or um, then we'll go to Subway afterwards, um, and I'll pay for your drink or something like that. Um, Definitely, it's also beneficial to other people who maybe you know who need to get out more or 
you know they're like, oh, I'm sad all the time, or maybe you know they're living by themselves, or maybe you know that they're not going to do anything this weekend. Um, and if you don't know, just ask. Just say, hey, are you doing anything this weekend? And they'll be like, yeah, I'm out of town with my parents. What's up? And they'll be like, oh, never mind. Have a good time with your parents. I'm just, just seeing what you're up to. Um, it's really not a big deal. Um, I, I realize in excuse me, I realize in your head it's a really big deal, but um, I'll let you know that it's it's nice to hear from another person. It's not a big deal. Um, think about when you get text messages from people, and they say, um, "Hey, you want to go out to eat?" And you're like at the cafeteria, being like, "Maria, at the cafeteria, sorry." And you know you really want to reach out to them because they're re reaching out to you. Um, or if they're like, hey, you want to go to a laundromat? And then you'll be like, yeah, I'm not doing anything. Let's go. Um, so really have that kind of attitude that it's worth the risk and it's not that big of a deal. And if it is that big of a deal to that person, um, they're not a first-tier friend. Um, so you have you at the top. You, you're the most important person to yourself. You need to put yourself at the top. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you don't think you're worth it. Maslow's hierarchy is starts at the bottom, but I don't care. So put yourself at the top. Um, and then you have a first tier friend that maybe this is more of a web, a web chart than a pyramid chart. Um, so put yourself in the middle. This is you. You in the middle. You can rely on you. Um, first tier friends, um, emotional partners, um, sexual partners, um, that are reliable to you, um, best friends that you've either made a very serious connection with, or are, have reliably been there for you, or friends who have been friends for a long time, um, constantly, cons consistent friend. First tier friends. So that's your first little level of friends around you. Um, organize them however you want, but those are the people that if you're on your deathbed, those are the people you want to see. Or if you're in a car crash, um, well that's not a good example. You'll probably call your parents or 911. Or if you are in jail, um, these are your first call people is the people that would wake up and come get you no matter how far away you are. So maybe your parents are in there, something like that. So a first tier friend. Um, well, let's, let's exclude um, family members who aren't in your age group because they'll, they'll be in a, this, this is friends. Um, uh, sorry, mom, <laughs> you're my friend. You're just, you're in a different web. These are people, these are different people. Um, and your second tier friends, are the people who you would call to go to the laundromat with, or maybe you want to go to see a movie and all of your first tier friends are busy and you're like, Jacob's pretty cool. Jacob has a car. Jacob likes saving two dollars to go see the Lone Ranger. I don't know. What was it? So um, those are your second tier friends. And your third tier friends are when somebody else is having a party and you go, and then you're like, oh, I, Jason? Like, you just like, oh, hi! Because Jason's a, a pop girl, obviously. She's like, oh, hi, I haven't seen you in forever. How have you been? And that's your, your third tier friends. Um, so you wouldn't call your third tier friend to go to the laundromat with you. But you would call a second tier friend and you would most definitely call a first tier friend. So maybe you want to write that out if that's helpful um, to get out more because that's really what I did and that's what I'm going to do and that's what you should do if you're having this trouble and you haven't tried it yet um, because it didn't work today but it sure did work the three days prior to that. So just remember to put yourself first Get some tea lights and breathe. Just remember to breathe. Remember, remember to remember to breathe. Oh my goodness.